a song came to my heart. The band, if you want to join in, you may. <laughs> but a lot of us know this. It's very, very simple. In fact, we can sing it a cappella. I'm trusting that my Deborah, <laughs> our Deborah knows this. I think you do. I think some churches might even call it the doxology. I'm not sure. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to lift our hands to heaven, and we're going to sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here. the band wants to join in <laughs> if you want to, if you guys can pick that up because I know that we've never practiced this I don't think we ever have and we're going to sing it just one more time but this time sing it with everything that is within you aren't you glad for his blessings today aren't you glad that you're in the kingdom of God today aren't you glad that you're a citizen of heaven today and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That we have overcome this world through faith in him. And that we do live by faith. We do walk by faith. And because you and I have been justified by faith, the Bible says you and I have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So as we worship him, I know he's going to fall and he's going to do great and mighty things in our midst today. you did good <laughs> they always do good you did good man and you know what you guys are dismissed if you desire to go you guys it's okay it's okay but as I was walking up here you know how many of you know stay, you can stay right there Deb that you know there's a song in your heart church in fact you don't need music to sing the Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And it says they began to speak with other tongues. Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the Spirit. Did Paul have a band when he said that? No. Where does it come out of? Your heart. He said to the, in, to the Ephesian church, be filled with the Holy Ghost. How? Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So right now, let's let this song one more time come out of our heart, and we'll do it without music, okay? And let's sing it with everything that is within us, church, and hear the words of the song and receive the spirit of the song, the spirit of the song is the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, Dad. Okay. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. 
Do you sense his peace, church? Today, Father God wants me to minister his peace to you today. And in the name of Jesus, I will give you some words of life that are filled with words of peace. And we will all be transformed again as we're moved from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You know what? One more time. <laughs> This time with a little oomph, huh? With a little oomph. <laughs> oh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise seated everyone thank you Ben thank you Debbie said why'd you do that Pastor Stan because that's what was in my heart to do and what when I was walking up here that's I just got an unction everybody say an unction you see you and I have to learn how to flow or should I say it this way function with the unction how many of you know that there's an unction inside of you to do the right thing there's an unction inside of you to pray for kings and for all that are in authority. To pray for our president, to pray for our leaders, to pray for our governor, to pray for our mayors, to pray for those that are in authority over us. And listen to this church. And when we do, God said something great is gonna happen to you. 2016 has been declared by the Spirit of God through Brother Copeland, that this is the great year, the great year. And he waited for more and he didn't hear anything. The Lord didn't respond right away and then the Lord spoke to him. And so he asked the question actually. How many of you know the Lord doesn't mind if you ask him questions? And the Lord said, he said, the great year of what? And the Lord responded and said, it's the great year for whatever you need it to be. What do you need today, church? Do you need wisdom? Do you need knowledge? Do you need understanding? Of course you do. The Bible says it's the principal thing. So many times we're we might be off chasing this or chasing that, chasing something natural, even chasing something carnal. But God says, no. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what? And all these things shall be added unto you. What is the kingdom of God? The Bible says, that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And when you got born again, how many of you know the kingdom of God came inside of you? How many of you know the kingdom is actually within you? Can you say with it? How many of you know that? Hallelujah. So then that means that righteousness is in you, peace is in you, joy is in you. In who? in the Holy Ghost. And you know what the Holy Ghost does? He guides us into all truth. He teaches us all things. 
He brings to our remembrance everything the Lord has spoken to us about, and he shows us things to come. Aren't you glad he's showing us today things to come? Now, the Lord, as you know, has spoken to me about ministering on faith to you. But I knew. Well, let me say it this way. This is what I do, church. I seek him. And I know you do, too. And I know that, you know, the more we do that, the more we'll find him. But I, always, I never come to the pulpit, or I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say that because let God be true and every man a liar. Oh, glory to God. Woo, that's a power. Oh, man, what did you just say, Pastor Stan? Oh, sometimes I haven't done it perfectly is what I'm trying to say. But he knows my heart. And almost, I'll have to say almost every time I've come to the pulpit, that's a better way to say it, to be honest before him. And he knows my heart. I always try to say, Lord, what do you want to do? What do you want? See, I don't want to do what I want to do. I want to do what he wants me to do. And church, that's what we need to be doing too. We don't need to be doing what we want to do. We need to be doing what he wants us to do. I don't even know how I got off on that, but that's for somebody in this room, obviously, including me right now, glory to God. Because you see, he always wants us to do what he wants us to do. Because when you do what he wants you to do, how many of you know you're in a safe place? Did you know the most perfect place to be is right in the center of his will? Glory to God. And in the book of Thessalonians. In fact, let's turn there this morning. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 for a minute. Let's just open our Bibles there. So I said all that because I had spoken to you and said, you know, I'm going to, as, as, long, as the Lord leads, I'm going to finish on faith. But this is a faith message. But it's a faith message about the peace of God. That's what I wanted to say to you this morning. This is a faith message about the peace of God. Because you know, when you're truly in faith, you know what you'll be? Truly in peace. Do you know why there, people are in such turmoil? Because they're not in faith. Because if you're in faith, you will be in peace. And so God wants to teach us how to live by faith, walk by faith, and not by sight. And listen, when you learn, you, and as you and I learn to live by faith and walk by faith, you know what we're going to do next? We're going to talk by faith. And faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Sometimes we've thought we've been in faith when we really haven't been in faith at all. We might have been in even been in hope or even doubt and unbelief and didn't even know it. In fact, the devil has disguised something in the church. It looks and sounds so much like faith that people think it's faith, but it's really mental assent. And we'll talk about that in, maybe in the, in the future. I'm sure that we will. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we read these words, and we'll start Let's start with verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Listen to this. And be at, what? Peace among yourselves. Everybody say, God wants us to be at peace in the church. Say, so he wants his people to be at peace. Now, verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward just a few men. 
Oh, no. It says, be patient, what? Toward all men. And look at verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good. Is peace good, church? Yes. Both among yourselves and to all men. Verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Now, one of the definitions of the word rejoice means to delight yourself in him, to gladden yourself in him. So what is it that God wants us to do today? Rejoice evermore. Do what? Rejoice evermore. To delight yourself evermore in the Lord, to gladden yourself evermore in him. And verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. But I said all that to get to this next verse because this is the key, folks. This is the key to being in the will of God for the rest of your life. And when you know you're in the will of God, you are in a place of peace. Do you believe the will of God contains peace? Do you believe that being in the will of God is being in a place of peace? Well, here's the will of God for you and I today, for the church today, for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. In everything. Oh, and just a few things. In everything. Give thanks. For this is the what? Will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Verse 19 goes on to say, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. And listen, as we do all of this, and we do everything that's written, even before what we read in the book of Thessalonians, here's what the Apostle Paul was saying. And the very God of peace. Say, Father God, I'm so glad you are my God of peace. I'm so glad I belong to the God of peace. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, and this is my prayer for you today, church. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful, oh, everybody say faithful, faithful. is he that calleth you who also will do it. Let me finish this off. Brethren, pray for us. Did you know that the leadership of this church need you to pray for us? Did you know that Pastor Stan and Jerry and Pastor Teresa and myself and Pastor Marcus and Pastor Barry and, and those that are in a leadership position here, those that have a responsibility of, of overseeing this church, that we need your prayers? And you know what? In the natural, as well as the spiritual, those who hold offices in our government, they need our prayers too. But here God is addressing the church and he says, saying, brethren, he's saying, brothers and sisters, pray for us. Why? So God can do great and mighty things. Let me read this about prayer. 
and where the church is today and what we need to do in these last days even more than we've done in the past. Here's a few words about prayer that I'd like to communicate to you today. And I do it all in the name of Jesus. Prayer is joining forces with God the Father. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Pray, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Prayer is joining forces with the Father so that he can manifest his blessings in our life and in this earth. It is fellowshipping with him. It is carrying out his will upon the earth. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, said it, said, it seems that God is limited by our prayer life. He can do nothing for humanity. He can do nothing for America. He can do nothing for the nations of the world. I'm putting my own paraphrase in there. But I want you to see something, church. I want you to see how powerful your place is in this earth, in the Father. It seems that God is limited by our prayer life. He can do nothing for humanity unless someone Ask him to do it. Why is this, you may ask? The answer is this. Because God made the world in the fullness thereof. Then he created man and gave man dominion over all the work of his hands. Adam was the God of this world. However, Adam committed high treason and sold out to Satan. Then Satan became the God of this world. He is called this in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. So here's why you and I need to pray. Because God doesn't just move in on top of Satan. Oh, that may be a shock to some of us. But listen to what I'm about to say. Because if he did, if God our Father, from whom all blessings flow, every good and every perfect gift comes from where? From the Father above. If he did that, if he just moved in on top of Satan, then Satan could accuse God of doing the very same thing that he had done. But God, our Father, God, the Son, our Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, three in one. But God has devised a plan of salvation and sent his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom Satan could not and did not touch. Through Jesus, church, God has redeemed mankind. Now authority has been restored to us through Jesus Christ. And when we ask God, then God can move, hallelujah. How many of you wanna see God move in the earth today? How many of you wanna see God move in your heart today? How many of you wanna see God move in your mind today, in your will today, in your emotions today, in your body today? How many of you wanna see God move in your family today? How many of you wanna see God move in your finances today? How many of you wanna see God move in, 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 in your, the lives of your brothers and sisters in Christ? How many of you wanna see God move in our nation like he wants to move in our nation? Then he's calling upon on you and I to pray, hallelujah. And to pray what? Prevailing 
prayers to peace. How many of you know God wants peace in America? But guess who's going to have to pray? It ain't the sinner. Because sinners want to sin. Well, God, will you do know that sinners pray, though, right? Especially when they're in trouble. Do you remember when you were in trouble? Before you knew him? Oh, God! And then if somebody asks you a week later, do you believe in him? Well, I'm not sure. It's true, though, isn't it, church? Well, I didn't know the message was going to go this way, church. But here we go. Now authority has been restored to us through, through Jesus Christ. If we really knew who we were, and we are learning, and there's much for us to learn yet, but everybody say, he's given us authority authority. to exercise in this earth, earth. to allow him to move move. and manifest his blessings blessings. and bring his blessings. To all mankind, mankind. no matter who they are, are. no matter where they are, are. no matter what they've done done. or haven't done. done. Let me read this. So this is why, because some of you may have this question, I've had this question. I think we've all had this question at one time or in our life. Uh, Well, if if God, you know, I mean, it well. Why isn't this happening? Or why isn't that happening? Here's why. Because the truth is, God, or I should say it this way, why does it seem that he can do nothing unless someone asks him to do it? And it's that way because that's what he, the way he created it. He said, ask, and it shall be given. Again, Satan is actually the God of this world. He is called this in the New Testament. And God, our Father, just doesn't move in on top of Satan. If he did, then Satan could accuse him of doing the very same thing that he had done. But God has devised a plan. Everybody say a plan. Amen. Of salvation. And sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom Satan could not and did not touch. So through Jesus, say it with me. Through Jesus. Through Jesus. God, has us. God has redeemed us. The Bible says that Christ has redeemed us from what? The curse of the law. He being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. That the what? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Faith. So in this great year, the Spirit of God spoke to Brother Copeland. And said, 2016, the great year. He asked, the great year of what? He said, it's the great year for whatever you need it to be. So what do you need today, church? What do you need? I'm going to tell you what you, all you have to do is ask him for what you need today. He said, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be what? opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. And he that seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it is open. Why am I saying all these things? Because God wants to manifest his peace in you today in a greater way than maybe you've ever known before. You see, 
it is of utmost importance that we, his children, know how to pray. You agree with that? Can I share a few words about prayer this morning that bring peace into our own lives? That allow the peace that's in you to be manifested in even a greater way? Do you know that whatever you feed, listen to this now, whatever you feed and water, that's what grows? How many of you want, to, want peace to be multiplied in your life today? How many of you could say today, Pastor, and be sincere, be honest, and I know you will be, but I, I need peace today. Is there anyone who needs peace today? Truth is, we all need it. And the reality is, we all have it through Jesus Christ. In Romans, we read through that you and I are justified by faith. And because you and I have believed on Jesus Christ, how many of you have believed on Jesus Christ? You have peace today. But did you know that even that peace, which God calls a fruit, that it is supposed to be growing, that we should have, we should be more aware of peace today inside of us and in our mind, our will, and our emotions, and our body than, than ever before. I should have more peace today in manifestation than I had yesterday. I should have more peace today in manifestation than I had when I was first saved. And yet it's all the same peace, but it grows. It grows, it grows, it grows. And so whatever you feed, Whatever you water in your life and in my life, it grows. What am I saying today? Feed the peace that God has inside of you. Did you know that the Bible says that you and I are living in turbulent times? Maybe we'll read about that in just a moment. But let me just read some words that will bring peace to your heart. First, let me start with this. Can you go to Proverbs chapter 3 real quick? Proverbs chapter 3. Pastor Marcus actually touched on some of my message today. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Pastor Marcus. Or I should say what the Lord put in my heart. Proverbs chapter 3. I'm going to read it from the Amplified and as, as well as from the uh, King James, but I'll read from the King James first. And I want you to get a hold of this because I'm telling, when I was seeking the Lord, I said, you know, Lord, what do you want me to minister on today? And he let me know it was peace. Folks, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Not what's going on on the outside of your life. Not even what's going on in your mind. Did you know your mind could be going through all kinds of things? But the peace of God is actually found in your heart. And the peace of God will actually keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And the peace of God is to flood our mind as well. But did you know you could have some turmoil going on in your mind, but you still have the peace of God if you're a believer? But you have to learn how to tap into it and release it. There's a song that Keith Moore sings. I let the peace of God rule in my heart. It quiets my mind from fearful thoughts. You see, that's what's trying to disrupt your peace today, fear. And I take authority over fear, and I command all fear to leave God's people in this room in Jesus' name. And everybody said with me, amen. amen. I let the peace of God rule in my heart. 
It quiets my mind from fearful thoughts. And when problems arise, like storms on the sea, the peace of the Lord is upon me. The peace of the Lord is upon me. When tempted to fret and get all upset, just remember the one who's inside you. You have overcome. Yes, the battle's been won. Yes, yes. And right now, Lord, bring it back to my remembrance. So hold on. <laughs> let the peace enter in. Listen, let the peace enter in where? Into your soul, into your mind, into your will, into your emotions. And even into your heart, because guess what? He's giving you more <laughs> right now. And let the peace enter in. Here it comes. With your mind stayed on him. So let the peace of God rule in your heart. It quiets your mind from fearful thoughts. And when problems arise, like storms on the sea, the peace of the Lord is upon me. The peace of the Lord is upon me. Is the peace of the Lord upon you today, church? Amen, amen, amen. So you're not gonna be moved by what you see. You're gonna, not going to be moved by what you feel. You're going to pray for those that are in authority, right? Yes. Amen. And here's why. Yeah, I could hear it playing in the back. <laughs> Tracy found it. Tracy found it. Turn with me real quick to, to uh, Timothy. Timothy. And I'll go back to Proverbs 3 in just a moment. <laughs> yeah, let's go to, to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. It says this in 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all then, I admonish and urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all men. Then he tells you who. For kings and for all who are in positions of authority or high responsibility. Why? Why, Lord, do you want me to pray this way? That outwardly, we may lead a, that we may pass, I'm reading from the Amplified, that outwardly we may pass a quiet and undisturbed life, and listen to this now, and inwardly a peaceable one in all godliness and reverence and seriousness in every way. For such praying is good and right and it is pleasing and acceptable to God our Savior, who wishes all men to be saved. How I many of you know that God wants every president, every prime minister, every king, whatever their title may be, God wants every one of them born again? Who wishes all men, that means everybody in every place of government. And how many of you know there are many believers in government today? But how many of you also know there are many unbelievers in government today? And that's why you and I have to pray. And when we do, we open the door for God to manifest his peace in this earth. 
who wishes all men to be saved and increasingly to perceive and recognize and discern and know precisely and correctly the divine truth. For there is only one God and only one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people, a fact that, will, that was attested to at the right and proper time. Now go back to Proverbs chapter 3 real quick. I'm going to say it this way. America is entering a new season. And let me tell you what it is in the spiritual realm. It is a spiritual awakening. So get ready, church. Our eyes are going to be open like never before. And the eyes of the sinner is going to be opened up like never before. And there's going to be such a mass harvest of souls that is going to come in in these last days that it, it, it may even boggle the human mind. It's going to be so quick. It's going to be so fast that it's going to, it's going to be amazing what God is doing and has done. Because Jesus is coming soon. But let me tell you how it all starts. It starts out with you and I, first of all, just loving him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then loving our neighbor even as ourself. Jesus also said this, a new commandment. He said it this way. He, let me just say something. That commandment was actually under the law, the Old Testament, that was an Old Testament, uh, under Old Testament law. And then Jesus said, and a new commandment, whoa, this is a new one? Yet they're connected. They're one and the same, if I may say it that way. And a new commandment, well, maybe I need to qualify that just a little bit. And I'll, I'll explain it in just a moment with the help of the Holy Spirit. And a new commandment, he said, I give unto you that you love one another even as what? I have loved you. Under the old covenant, they were to love their neighbor, what? As themselves. But here's my question. What if they didn't love themselves? How could you love your neighbor if you don't even love yourself? And that's the problem, folks. People have been trying to love without the love of God. You see, in order for us to even love the way we're supposed to love, you can only love one way, and that's through God. That's with God, because God is love. So, if we're gonna see the miracles and the signs and the wonders that God wants us to see in these last days, if we're gonna see a harvest of souls come in like never before, we gotta be a part of this love walk. Hallelujah. Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you do what? That you love one another even as I have what? Loved you. How has Jesus loved us? That's the way God wants us to love one another. You say, Pastor, what does that have to do with peace? It has everything to do with peace. You show me a person who's not in love, and I'll show you a person who's not in peace. You show me a person who is in love. Y'all hear what I'm trying to say? Are you hearing between the lines? Are you hearing with your heart, not just your head? You see, it's true in the natural and it's, also, and it's even more true in the spiritual. In fact, the reason it is true in the natural is because it, first of all, comes out of the spirit realm. You don't think the devil thought of love. No. God thought of love. God, love is God himself. And so in the natural, man gets married to his wife and he has a natural love for her. But even that love, if not guarded, can turn to selfishness overnight. I could say to my wife, honey, I really love you, and the next minute I might be hitting her. 
I know, I'm just talking natural now. I, I, I appreciate that because I'm not going to do that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to illustrate something here because that's what happened. Y'all know it. How many of you have heard of God? How, well, I won't even ask you how many. I mean, uh, I, you know, maybe I won't go. Maybe I, won't, maybe I better stop meddling right now because I think I'm, I'm, I might be going a little too far here. But what the point I'm trying to say is, Guys do it all the time. Oh, honey, hey, baby, I really love you. You know how I really love you. Yeah, yeah. And then, pew. you really loved her? You're a, you're a liar, boy. You're a liar. Woo. What's going on here, Pastor Stan? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just letting go. That's what I'm, I'm just letting go. Hallelujah. But I won't go too much longer because it's always good to see you week in and week out. And I want to see y'all next week. You know, hallelujah. It's always good to see you. Oh, if Pastor Stan goes five hours, I don't know. I don't know if I want to sit under, you know, for five hours. Well, maybe I don't either. So, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, how do I say it? Where's all this coming from? Glory to God. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is, how many of you know God's love is greater than natural love. But even in the natural, if you love somebody and you walk in it, there is a measure of peace. But agape love is the God kind of love that never fails. And even when you have a tiff and even when you have a struggle and even when there's been a disagreement or an argument of some kind that love will come back to each other and say honey forgive me I'm sorry I was wrong and guess what y'all make up okay how to get off on that right did that minister to anybody okay what am I saying here I'm saying, and I got to stay right on it. God said he wants to minister peace to you. So I speak peace to you. I speak peace to this church. I speak peace to this city. I speak peace to our state. I speak peace to our nation. I speak peace to our government. I speak peace to our president, to our vice president, to our Congress men and women, to our Supreme Court justices. I speak peace to this nation as we move forward in the plan and purposes of God. I speak peace so that the gospel can be proclaimed, so that men and women can be born again. I speak peace to this nation, but not only to this nation, I speak peace to this world, and I do it all with you in the name of Jesus. Folks, we gotta speak peace. You gotta speak peace to your wife. You got to speak peace to your husband. You, you got to speak peace to your children. I'm telling you, I hope you're hearing my heart. The word that God gave me today was peace. If I don't, if I don't leave anything with you other than the word peace, meditate on it. Think about it. Ponder it. Let it rise up big within you. And where there hasn't been peace, ask God to forgive you and let the peace of God just come in your heart again. Get filled up with peace. Say, Father, fill me with peace today. Fill me with your peace today. In my mind, in my will, in my emotions, in my body. The reason why so many people are sick today I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you why a lot of people are sick and they don't even know. They've been trying to overcome this. They've been trying to overcome that. It's because they need, first of all, peace. Isaiah 57 says, I create the fruit of your lips. He goes on to say, peace to him that is far off and peace to him that is near. And I will come and heal him. I'm telling you what, when your body is in a state of peace, it's in a position to, to be healed, to receive what God has. I'm commanding, in fact, the Lord is showing me this, high blood pressure is leaving people right now in the name of Jesus. High blood pressure is leaving. I speak peace to you. I speak t peace to your, to your circulatory system. But see, just don't let me speak the peace. You speak the peace. 
See, so many times, see, I'm here to teach you, not just, not just to, we're not here just to do it all for it, but we're here to teach you. And so you've got to say what you want in life. The prophet said by the spirit of God, 2016 is the great year. He said the great year of what? He said it's the great year for whatever you need it to be. What do you need today? Well, today God is obviously emphasizing peace. So he wants his people to have peace in this church. And I'll just tell you around the world, he wants his people to have peace. So let's just lift our hands to heaven and just say with me, say, Heavenly Father, today... You're ministering ministering peace peace to my heart heart. in the name of Jesus. I believe I I receive receive your peace peace. that floods my heart, that floods my my mind, that floods my my will, that floods my my emotions, and floods my body body. and and makes me every whit whole. Thank you for your peace that passes all understanding that keeps my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. And everybody who believed that said amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let me close with these words. My son from Proverbs 3, forget not my law, But let thine heart keep my commandments. You see, if you want the peace of God to dominate in your life, if you want the peace of God to rule in your heart, if you want your mind to be so filled with the peace of God that all you know is peace and not turmoil or confusion, then here's what you have to do. Don't forget God's word. That's what he said here. My son, forget not my law. That's another way of saying, my son, don't forget my words. Don't forget my Bible. Don't forget my word for your life. But here's what he said. But let your heart keep my commandments. And so what happens? What happens when you and I first Don't forget. You know why he said, my son, forget not my law? Because in the natural and even in the spiritual realm, we have, there's a tendency for us to forget what God has said. Don't forget what God has said. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Why? Here it comes, folks. I'm going to finish it off with this today, and we'll just see if we, how we pick this up next week and how the Lord would minister to us. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. You see, it is God's will, church, that every one of us at Words of Life and throughout the earth, that every believer enjoy and receive and walk in the light of length of days, long life, and peace. But the only thing that will add that to our life is his word and then us keeping his word, his commandments, his commandment of love, his commandments of peace, his commandments in our heart. In Matthew 18, we read these words. From the Message Bible, verses 18 through 20. Take this most Seriously, a yes on earth is yes in heaven. A no on earth is no in heaven. What you say, listen to this now, to one another is eternal. That is why you and I must speak what? Words of life 
and words of peace. If you want to see peace in your life, what do you have to speak? Peace. If you want peace to grow, what do you have to feed? Peace. How do you feed that peace? With the word of God. I mean this. Listen to this. When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. And when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure that I'll be there. Have we gathered together in his name today, church? We're sure that he's here. And I know that he is, even if you weren't here, because I know that if it was just you, he would be here because he lives in you as a born-again believer if you're born again. But here he's talking about, here he's talking about the prayer of agreement. And I'm going to close out today's service this way. I'm going to say it this way. If you need peace in any area of your life and you would like us to pray about it with you, then I want you to come forward at the conclusion of this service and Pastor Marcus and myself and, and uh, Dr. Dan, are you available, sir? Are you available to help us? Okay. And uh, let's see. And the Galloways, are you available to help us after service? We want to pray with anyone here who would like for us to stand with them in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God wants to manifest his peace in your life and bring peace to this earth like never before. And here's how he's going to do it. Through and with his people in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Let's lift our hands to heaven as we close. Say, Father, Father we, agree, we agree, and we're asking for your will to be done in all of our lives as it is in heaven. Peace is your will, so we speak and we ask for the peace of God to be manifested in all of our lives like never before. May your peace be multiplied in us as you have spoken in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Well, God bless you, everybody. Have a great day. Have a peaceful week. And remember, Jesus is Lord. And if you need prayer about peace, and desire peace in a situation in your life. We're here for you today in Jesus' name. God bless.